Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and I thank you for joining me today. So I've been documenting my experience with Jehovah's Witness elders. As far as I know, they disfellowshipped themselves in what I sometimes consider a traumatizing experience. Sometimes I feel unfazed because I know there are more Christians out there than there are Jehovah's Witnesses. So when they do what they do to humiliate those who have found Christ, I feel unfazed knowing that there are more Christians who see things the way I see it, plainly from the scriptures. But on the other hand, you would agree with me that if you've been following my story, it's been a traumatizing experience. It's been emotionally painful, a long journey, and it's intentional. They purposely put you through this long and painful process to make you give up your, your new faith in Christ, to make you give in to the brotherhood because they know they are not for Christ. I'm about to explain what I'm talking about. In case you've not been following, I'll just give you a quick snapshot of what this story has been about. I shared a book with my family and according to Jehovah's Witnesses, it is apostasy when you share a book or any information that is not of Jehovah's Witness origin if it talks about God. Yes, yet this is a religion that preaches about God, so they expect you to listen to them, but they are trained not to listen to you. And what interested me was that it was my dad who reported me. It might interest you to know, my mother is a Presbyterian, or you can say was a Presbyterian before my dad married her. So he has married a non-Jehovah's Witness and they are still married till today because love is the greatest of them all. And this is what happened. He shared the information with my congregation here in America that I had shared apostate material and they began to follow up, to investigate. They met with me the first time I shared with them some personal experiences that I was having in the family, reading the Bible, drawing closer to God because I was having some spiritual attacks. So they came back a second time because that was not what they expected to hear. The second time, the story did not go as they planned. It turned out that they wanted me to join them to insult and criticize the Catholic Church and in their words, conform. Yes, when they say conform, they want to make a subtle threat that if you don't dismiss the scriptural truths you are finding, they will throw you out. They said it with a scripture that said, I will take you in. Meaning, if you dismiss what you are learning from the Bible, they will leave you as one of them. But if you don't dismiss it, there's an unsaid consequence. They will throw you out. It's called disfellowship. When they disfellowship you, your family is required not to speak to you. As we speak, according to them, they have disfellowshipped me and members of my family do not communicate with me. They communicate with me as if they are doing me a favor because I've been contaminated. Why? I learned the scriptures is simply aligned with a Catholic influenced book that I had shared with my father. I'm married to a Catholic anyway. Before I shared the book with my family, including my father, we were all good, right? I was not an apostate. But the minute I shared that document that shed light on the truth, I became an apostate. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that hypocrisy? You tell me. To be clear, I am not here to promote the Catholic Church. Neither am I here to promote religion. It is by mere coincidence that the book I shared was actually speaking of Jehovah's Witnesses written by a Catholic. That's all. It was not even written by the Catholic Church. I'm just here to tell my story. Now, although my husband is Catholic, I did not get this book from him, like I've shared. He has no idea what this book is about. He allowed me to pursue the truth 
on my own for myself. And I give God the glory for that. So the third meeting, when I would not conform or when I would not respond to their questions, require me to answer if I, if I still saw myself as a Jehovah's Witness. I refused to give them a definite answer for obvious reasons. I did not owe them that response. My relationship with God is between us. It had nothing to do with them. When I didn't give them an answer, they came again at a third meeting. This time they re-strategized. They listened patiently to scriptures that I had to read to them about personal experiences, my personal encounter with the Holy Spirit of God, which anybody who has a repentant heart can encounter. When I shared those experiences and shared scriptures that backed up my experiences, it was new information to them. As they normally put it, it was new light. That is how Jehovah's Witnesses put new information. But it was not the type of new light they wanted because it was the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What did they do next? They posed a trick question to trap me into answering if I would share or promote that light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with the congregation. How can I deny my Lord? How can I deny my Redeemer? How can I deny my Savior? I said an absolute yes. A firm yes that they clinched as evidence to proceed to next steps for punishment. Punishment for sharing scriptures that go against their doctrines. And what is the next process called? Judicial committee. You are to face the judicial committee. So they proceeded to that level. They, they called me to invite me to the judicial committee meeting. I accepted and I said I will show up. And here's how I showed up first. I showed up with an email. Let me read to you the email that I sent to them. After they read this email, it will interest you what they did next. But I showed up first via email and that email caught them off guard. Here's the email. Now keep in mind, the Jehovah's Witness Judicial Committee is reserved to judge sinners. There will be three elders based on a scripture that says, where there are three witnesses, the judgment is true. So there will be three elders who will judge the sinner. The person's sin might be fornication, it might be lying, it might be stealing, and it might be apostasy. In this case, they accuse themselves of apostasy. Because as far as I know, I was not an apostate based on the scriptures. But based on their doctrines, I am proud to be a Jehovah's Witness apostate. Because by being a Jehovah's Witness apostate, I no longer promote their cause. I no longer promote their doctrines. So it is to the glory of God that I am a Jehovah's Witness apostate. And if that's what they choose to call me, I embrace it. So here's the email that I wrote to them, making three demands. Keep in mind, they treat these people like criminals. In fact, come close. They have a secret book that your wife is not supposed to see. Your siblings are not supposed to see. This secret book is for elders, titled Shepherd the Flock of God. Now in that Shepherd the Flock of God, do you know what they call people they've invited to the Judicial Committee? The accused. Can you imagine calling your brother in the Lord the accused? Can you imagine? But who does the Bible call your accuser? So, they invited me. I showed up. <laughs> and I made three requests by email. And I closed the request with a shocking truth. Affirming Jesus Christ. As God, which is something Jehovah's Witness doctrines do not do. They do not recognize the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So here's the email that I wrote. As always, 
It is long. I have a habit of long emails when I want to leave a good paper trail. And it worked. Because what they did after this email will surprise you. Dear brothers of the Judicial Committee, regarding our meeting this evening, I would like to make three requests as follows. One, kindly bring with you the 1984 revised version of the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Feel free to bring the print version of the soft or soft copy, whichever is available to you. I suppose this will not be a concern for you because all scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness. As men of God, verse 17 of this scripture goes further to explain how the scriptures support your work so that the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. Whether it's your current version of the scriptures or your older version, you can't deny the Bible. Bring it because I never know what game they're going to play. First of all, I want to make sure that whatever scripture they quote, I can discredit it by using their pattern of changing, adding, and removing from the Bible. So I wanted to get that down as a requirement. The reason I make this request is so that I may urge you, brothers, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you should all speak in agreement that there should be no divisions among you, but that you may be completely united in the same mind and in the same line of thought. So, when they invite you for apostasy, they read you Romans chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, saying you are causing division by bringing a teaching, a scriptural teaching that deviates from the one the watchtower has given you. And here I am asking them to unite. So it's documented that I have no intention of causing division. Let me read on. Request number 2A. Number 2 has part 2A and 2B. Kindly acknowledge and confirm that we will adhere to Jehovah's living word as the only foundation for our reasoning together because there is no end to the making of many books which is wearisome to the flesh for this reason i will be given the opportunity to respond to each question using at least two to three scriptures the reason for this is that there are three of you working together in the judicial committee to bear witness for the word of god to be given that there is no partiality with god <laughs> I would humbly ask that you agree that I will also be allowed the same number of scriptures to bear witness for the word of God as Jesus Christ says. You judge according to the flesh. I do not judge any man at all. And yet, even if I do judge, my judgment is truthful because I am not alone. But the Father who sent me is with me. Also in your own law, it is written. The witness of two men is true. I am one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. This is the scripture they use to justify having a gang of men rendering judgment on you. And here I am coming at them with the same scripture. Let's go head to head for our God. Request number three. It is clearly understood that our meeting will be on the premise that each of you may individually accept individually. So you are responding for yourself. I needed an individual response from each of them, not a generalized response that each of you confirm without reservations that the Bible verses below guide your sense of discernment or judgment, so to speak. And here's the thing. I wanted them to know that they cannot twist the reason for what I'm about to say, I needed them to understand they cannot twist the word of God just because they want to be right. I'm not a criminal. Even though your book says I accused, I am not a criminal. I've been the one adhering to the word of God. You've been the one looking to your bulldog, the watchtower. Every word that I am commanding you is what you should be careful to do. You must not add to it or take away from it. So don't just 
twist the Bible to suit your doctrines because you want to be right. And second uh, scripture is this. I am bearing witness to everyone who has the words of the prophecy of the scroll. If anyone makes an addition to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the scroll. And if anyone takes anything away from the words of the scroll of this prophecy, God will take his portion away from the trees of life and out of the holy city. Things that are written about in this scroll. And finally, every saying of God is refined. He is a shield to those taking refuge in him. Add nothing to his words or he will reprove you and you will be proved a liar. So I know these men haven't read the scriptures. And the Watchtower doctrines are designed to add and remove from the scriptures. So here's how I wrapped up the email. For the word of God is alive and exerts power and is sharper than any two-edged sword and pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints from the marrow and is able to discern thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is not a creation that is hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and openly exposed to the eyes of the one to whom we must give an account. If they have common sense, let them know this is not the real account. This doesn't matter. What you're doing is just a dog and pony show. It's inconsequential. I'm not really rendering an account to you. So I proceeded with this. If these requests are not agreeable to each and every one of you, I would respectfully decline the meeting. I don't owe you my attendance. I don't owe you my presence just because I read the Bible. No, I should not subject myself to further trauma. I should not because I read the Bible. Isn't that what you've been encouraging us to do? Okay. And here's a little bit of a surprise package that I had to include because Jehovah's Witnesses, like I said before, they attack the deity of Jesus Christ. And I knew when they asked me at the previous meeting if I would share this light, they were doing everything they could to suppress the word of God, to suppress the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I needed to make it clear that it's scriptural. So here's what I concluded with. May I emphasize that I'm looking forward to meeting with you all. Thank you for continually doing everything you can to shepherd the congregation of our wonderful counselor and mighty God, eternal father, who was prophesied about in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For a child has been born to us. A son has been given to us and the rulership will rest on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. To the increase of his rulership and to peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and on his kingdom, in order to establish it firmly and to sustain it through justice and righteousness, from now on and forever, the zeal of Jehovah of Armies will do this. Now, this is the main point of what we are saying. We have such a high priest as this, and he, Jesus, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the holy place and of the true tent, which Jehovah set up and not man. So this email, one email brought down like five doctrines in case you don't know Jehovah's Witnesses. It brought down their doctrine that Jesus is not God. Here's Isaiah saying, he's mighty God, eternal father. The father is in him, he is in the father, eternal father. It brought down the doctrine that Jesus began to rule in 1914. How can you say that? From the moment this prophecy was made, it says his kingdom from now and forever to, till forever. From the moment the prophecy was made, Jesus was king. He wasn't even born yet. He was not even born yet. Okay, and then their doctrine that when you read the scriptures, you are an apostate. This brought it down. Here I am telling them to be united. Telling them to be united. And here I am questioning without being malicious why there should be three men if there are going to be three men 
I should be able to read through scriptures. And you will, you, you, they, they will probably be wondering, if she knows up to three scriptures ahead of time without knowing what questions she's going to be asked, she must be bold. But let me also say this, judicial committee, when you go head to head, or rather when you face the judicial committee, it's not a fair judgment. Of course, they are mere mortals. In addition to that, it's intended to be a punishment. No, they're not doing the work of God. If they were doing the work of God, they would know that the Bible is against judging your brothers. There's only one judge and that's God. So it's not intended for good. So your fate is decided even before you show up. So after I wrote them this email, what happened? The email, what, the meeting, the judicial committee meeting was supposed to be, I think, 5 p.m. that day. Let me tell you what happened. Watch this video to see what happened. This is the recording of the phone call they made to me. But after they read this email, of course, they had to be scared. Here's what happened. I to share any information that undermines confidence in the brothers in the Jehovah's arrangement. Okay. So what you are saying is that the email I sent you this morning undermines Jehovah's arrangement. Now, I'm not saying nothing more than just what I just said. That, Did that, I that share is, anything that is not from New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures? Did I? Well, well uh, like Brother White said, we, I, I think we're not calling to go into any debate. Uh, that's the information I would like to share with you, and, and that would be the end of it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so it has become problematic to share the Word of God. It's the same Bible that says you must obey God as ruler rather than man. So I think you know my position on that. Well, again, we're not going to debate. We're not going to go into any you know, long discussion. Those, that's just information that we want to pass on to you this evening. Um, I will obey Jehovah. I will obey Almighty God. As okay. ruler, not man. But I thank you for your time. You have canceled the meeting this evening. And uh, I really looked forward to reasoning with all of you from the scriptures. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate that you feel the scriptures undermine the confidence in the organization. Um, I thought this was an organization for God. Jehovah's organization. I don't know who I'm. I'm I don't know who your Jehovah is because if it's the God that I know from His living Word, you will you will do that. And I told you, brother Oki, it was your it was your own very wife who read me the Bible, Joshua one eight, encouraging me to read the Word of God in an undertone day and night. So what what was the expectation? Or was it not was was it not intentional? Or was it intentional? Which one? Well, like I said, we're not going through any debate. We're not gonna go into any you know, the that's the information that we're gonna pass on to you this evening. The meeting has been cancelled and you're not to share uh what you believe with others. You you're not you're not to spread that within the conversation. That's not my belief. <laughs> that is the word of God. Okay. And All if right. you just so you know before you hang up. You want to own that you are on record, Brother Oki and Brother White, on record representing congregation that I'm not to share the word of God, that Christ is ruler, right? That Christ is eternal, uh, according to Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verse we 6. Don't want, uh, we, don't, we don't want you to twist what we said. Okay? Oh, I'm we not twisting it. Yeah, yeah, we, I'm we, not we twisting it. It was clearly understood. You think that sharing the scriptures will undermine the intentions of the organization. No wonder. No. Okay, I, I hear no. you loud and clear, okay. and you are on record. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. All right. Did you hear that? This email, it's suddenly my belief. What did I say there that is not scriptural? But all of a sudden, it is my belief. But look at what is even more mind-blowing. It undermines confidence 
in the brothers in jehovah's arrangement so confidence in the brothers is priority over our lord and savior jesus christ <laughs> daniel's prophecy the disgusting thing standing in a holy place but those who know their god will act wisely the daily sacrifice what is the daily sacrifice ask yourself the holy communion do Jehovah's Witnesses eat Holy Communion? But a time will come when knowledge will be abundant. Uh-huh. Are you adding it up? If you go to YouTube, is information I'm not abundant? <laughs> okay, what else do we know about Daniel's prophecy? Until their denunciation is complete. I'm giving you clues. If you know your God, you know your God. Daniel 11, Daniel 12. Seal it up. That's enough clue for now. But Jehovah's Witnesses will never know this because guess what? Where they put daily sacrifice, they changed it to constant feature. Yet the rest of the scriptures say daily sacrifice for that. But that particular place to make sure a Jehovah's Witness never knows the fingers are pointing to them. They change that particular Daniel where they have daily sacrifice. They put it to constant feature. Use your Bible app. You will thank me later. Now, after listening to that phone call, what did the Bible warn us? Test the inspired statement to know if it is from God. When they acknowledge confidence in the brothers before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is it of God? Their publications once in a while throw in subtle messages about Jesus. Are they really acknowledging Jesus Christ? The Bible says you cannot light up the lamp and put it under the table. A house built on a mountain top cannot be hidden. So I cannot find out this good news about the light of the world and hide it under the table no matter the threat coming from mere mortals so what did i do <laughs> i went to the congregation email where they make announcements guess what i did i opened it and i hit reply all i hit reply all documenting everything a meeting that they cancelled without any scriptural reason and I shared how their doctrines cannot stand with scriptures. And all hell broke loose. Before I started recording the video you just watched, they started threatening me that they would take action against me. That was what actually prompted me to start recording. So what did they do? They had to make good on that threat. They came back. They came back again to invite me to a judicial committee. This time, all three men of the judicial committee were on the phone call. Yes, they came back to invite me. This time, they quoted two scriptures. The first time was just Romans chapter 16, verses 16 and 17 that I'm causing division. This time, they quoted two scriptures, the same Romans and 2 John, I think chapter, verse seven. Something about Antichrist, of course, when you point one finger, the rest point to you. So that's the scripture they quoted and invited me. This time they felt really tough. They felt they had to be tough. They were rude. They were nasty. They were negative. Who cares? Of course, I recorded them again. Here's the recording. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Please hold on one second. Hello, Chairman, are you there? I'm here. Okay. We have a uh, Chairman line. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, Chairman. This is Smith, Loki, uh, and uh, Mike. Uh, the reason for our call, the reason for our call is that we'd like to invite you to a judicial hearing. Uh, the judicial hearing is based on Couple of scriptures. Uh, one is Romans 
Romans chapter 16 and verses 17 and 18. And the other is 2 John 7, 9, and 10. Okay, you um, mind holding on? Let me get... Can you hold on? Let me get... Uh, can you hold on? Let me get... Uh, no. Let us finish. Let us finish. Oh, please. okay. We are inviting you to this hearing uh, for Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And we will, we will forward to you the Zoom data so that you can join us at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, September 14th. If uh, there is any situation that may cause you not to be able to attend that meeting, uh, you have my number. Um, to give me a call or text, and uh, let us know the reading. But as, as of this point, uh, we wanted to leave that with you. Is that understood? No. That's not understood? No, because I had a question. I wanted to write down the scriptures, and you wouldn't let me. A second John, chapter 7. Let me get something. I asked you to hold on and... Please hold on if that's fine. Okay, with you. so so we're we're going to leave the line. You've been given the invitation, all right? Okay. And we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Yes, they invited me a second time. What did I do? I modified the first email and sent it back to them again, making the same demands. Bring your Bible versions from 1984 and after and older. Yes, let's see how you guys add and remove from the word of God when he has warned you not to. Number two, you must allow me, since there are three of you, I must read up to three scriptures to bear witness for God. And number three, you must all acknowledge that you'll adhere to those terms and conditions on an individual basis because you can't come there and bulldoze me. I'm not a criminal. But what happened? I didn't show up. I didn't show up to the meeting because they would not respond. So the next day, what did they do? They called me. I answered. And here's the pronouncement they made. Um, we saw your email that you sent just a uh, few minutes ago. Uh -huh. and the reason that uh, you received... Uh, calls from Brother Oki and Brother White is that uh, we were ready for the meeting at 6 o'clock yesterday as we had invited you to. <clears throat> you must understand that we are under no obligation to meet your terms as far as meeting with you to a meeting that we invited you to. So with that thought in mind, it was the decision of the Judicial Committee, that you should be disfellowship on the congregation. It is hope in time that you would uh, come back. Never. On repentance. Never. Christ has set me free from okay. the doctrines of men. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. They disfellowshipped themselves from the body of Christ. I am happy to call myself a child of God. Every other name they want to call me is of no importance to me. Apostle Paul said, It is of no significance to me to be judged by a human tribunal because the only one who examines me is God. I do not even examine myself. That's what he said. I don't even judge myself. The only one who will judge me is God. So what they are doing here is a dog and pony show. They are just doing it to keep busy, to waste their time. They could have been pursuing something. They could have been pursuing their own repentance. They could have been pursuing more fruitful things. And here they are promoting a brotherhood. As far as I'm concerned, in their words, it's a brotherhood. Now that's all I have for you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe like, share, and hit your notification button so when I release a new video, you will know. Have a nice day.